Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here, and in today's video, we are doing a video on how to install Windows Server 2008 R2 in VirtualBox. So this is the updated version of Windows Server 2008, comes with a bunch of different uh, updates on this here. A uh, little bit of a different uh, user interface there on it as well, um, but this was a suggested video uh, to do here. So I figured I'd go ahead and make this tutorial. And so without further ado, we'll go ahead and get straight into it. So what we'll want to do here is, um, first download VirtualBox and also the, um, install image for 2008 R2. Uh, you can find those in the description. VirtualBox will be the first link. It'll pull you up to this page. Um, you can download it for your specified OS if you have not done so already. You can also download the expansion pack or extension pack as well. And then the second link will be a uh, link for the image or the ISO for Windows Server 2008 R2. Now this is a 64-bit version of Server 2008, um, whereas I believe in my normal Server 2008 video um, was a 32-bit version I had used. So. Uh, this is only 64-bit that I have um, and will be using for this tutorial. And again, that will be in the description below if you do need it um, as well. And so once we've got both of those downloaded there, or if you've already gotten a copy of it or uh, have VirtualBox downloaded, we will go ahead and open up VirtualBox and should bring you up to your manager here with your VMs if you have any on the left side. Uh, but regardless, what we'll do here first, of course, is go ahead and go up to the top and create a new machine by hitting the new button. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this just Windows Server 2008 R2. Um, and it should automatically select the version to Windows 2008 64-bit. If for any reason it does it to 32-bit, you can just go into the menu and um, highlight the 64-bit. Or if it doesn't auto-change it, you can scroll down in here and select Windows 2008 64-bit. Once that's selected and you've got your uh, directory specified that you want to save your machine folder to. We'll go ahead and hit next. It's going to ask us for the recommended memory and RAM size here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this from the recommended of two gigs to four gigs. Um, certainly can keep it at the recommended of two if you wish, but uh, if you would like to up it, you certainly can. And then we'll hit next to confirm that. And then of course, this will be the portion we will want to create the virtual hard disk um, recommended size it does inform us here would be 32 gigs so we'll hit create for creating a new one and then uh, you can go ahead and select your specified file type again uh, vhd vmdk you can choose if you want to use it in other uh, virtualization software such as vmware um, vdi i'm just going to keep here just uh, to use it in virtualbox but you can pick any one of these go ahead and hit next and then can choose either dynamically allocated or fixed size, depending on uh, what you wish here. If you want to have it just on that fixed size or uh, dynamically allocated, we'll just progressively um, use up your storage instead of just having the fixed 32 gigs. Uh, so pick your option there, hit next, and then we will go ahead and specify our capacity. I'm just going to leave this at the default of 32 gigs. You can certainly increase it as you wish or leave it at the default. Once you have your capacity, uh, go ahead and hit create, and this will create our machine as well as the uh, virtual hard drive along with it. And then we'll have it at the bottom of the list here if you do have a list, or it will just show up at the top if that's the only machine you've created. Um, so I've dragged it up to kind of order it here a little bit. And so what we'll want to do is um, when you have your machine highlighted, we'll go ahead and hit settings to go into our machine settings. And then go down to the storage tab on this left side here. And then from there, you will hit the empty disk. You'll want to hit the disk on the right side after that. And we will want to uh, hit choose a disk file. Um, if you've used it previously, um, if you have the copy and you've used it previously, it may be listed in your recently used here. But for this instance, we'll just do choose. And then I'm going to go ahead and locate the ISO. And there it is right here. And then once it's in there, um, all we need to do is hit OK. That will save the settings and uh, go ahead and slot that into that uh, virtual drive there for the image. And then once all that is confirmed, we can go ahead and hit Start to go ahead and start up our virtual machine. 
and we'll open a new window here and we'll go ahead and let it boot up it will bring us to the windows loading files screen and then we'll come up with the boot screen here um, of course looking similar to windows 7 and then we have the uh, install windows first setup screen here so on this you just want to make sure you pick your specified language time and currency format as well as your keyboard method as well uh, once you've had your selected options here as needed, go ahead and hit next and then just hit install now. And we'll come up with a setup as starting screen here. And then should automatically bring us here to the uh, version you'll want to install. Um, you can pick any of these as you wish. Uh, the server core just uh, does an install where you mainly do everything through the command prompt. Full installation gives you the full GUI interface. Um, so I'm just going to do the standard full installation here. Um, again, pick as you wish here if you want to try the enterprise data center or um, web server. But I'll just do the Windows Server 2008 R2 standard full installation. And we'll hit next. It will come up with the license terms here. So we'll go ahead and want to hit the checkbox to accept the license terms and hit next. And then it's going to give us the option of either upgrading or custom. Obviously, we can't upgrade since there's no current OS on it. Um, so we'll hit custom. Should bring us up to our disk zero unallocated space of whatever capacity you have set it to. I had just left it at the default of 32 gigs. So we will want to just make sure that is highlighted and hit next. And it will start with the process of installing uh, Windows here. So let this run through. This will take some time to... Uh, run through the installation. We'll uh, have a couple of reboots as well. Um, so I'll I'm just go ahead and let this sit here. Let it uh, copy over the files and uh, get the first portion of the installation started. And then I will see you guys here once we hit our first uh, restart point during the setup. All right, so we have hit our first restart point here. So it will run through a countdown automatically, or you can go ahead and hit the button down in the bottom right to restart now before the countdown expires. And then it will reboot and do not press any key to boot from the CD or DVD, or you will go into a consistent loop of getting through that first portion. So make sure it runs through that, and then it should come up to a, a blank screen here and eventually load up um, into the next portion here. So. Um, again, you'll see the boot screen, um, which actually looks like the Vista one this time around. Um, and then it will go back into that same window as it was before. Um, it'll do a quick registry uh, setting update, and then it will go back to that completing installation uh, portion. So uh, again, just kind of let this run through here. Again, it uh, will take some time. Of course, uh, depending on the computer hardware you have, on your uh, PC there um, will take some time but uh, this will be the next longer portion of the setup and then uh, should hit another restart point and we'll get us to the operating system so here you see it says setup is starting services and then it will come up with the window where it was before on the completing installation step so let this run through again here and then um, should get close to the end on the bar down in the bottom and so we'll go ahead and let this run through and then i will be back with you guys once we hit our next restart point all right so should come up here where it says it will set up uh where setup will continue after restarting your computer it will reboot and again do not press any key to boot from that cd or dvd again it will just keep you going into a loop and then it will uh flash a black screen here and then we'll uh, go to the next portion here on this. So again, it should do the loading bar down on the bottom once that goes away and this pops up. And then once that is finished through, it will take us into the next part here and should go forth with continuing on that. And if it sits in this blank screen here for some time, that's normal. It does uh, do that um, on the installation at times. So we'll uh, let it sit it come up uh, with the cursor as it does there. 
and then it will prepare the computer for first use, which this looks pretty similar to uh, the Windows 7 setup uh, as it does this as well. So we'll sit here for a little bit and then uh, another screen should pop up eventually. So then we'll eventually pop up to a screen here that says that the user's password must be changed before logging on for the first time. So we'll just hit OK. And this is for the default administrator account that it has in here. So I'll just uh, throw a password on this real quick. And then it should say changing password and it should be changed if it's got the matching passwords on there. We'll hit OK. It will uh, go ahead and log us into the default uh, administrator account will be on preparing your desktop and then should bring us to the desktop and uh, those sorts of things and open up the server manager here so um, with that that should conclude the tutorial here uh, if you guys did enjoy uh, watching this or if this had helped you out in any way uh, for installing this version uh, Certainly do leave a like on the video down below. And if you do have any future video ideas, uh, certainly can leave a comment down below um, and we'll go through those. And uh, if you guys have any suggestions and if you guys are not yet subscribed, you can certainly do that on the end screen uh, at the end of the video, or you can hit it down below, hit subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I upload a video. So that again concludes the uh, tutorial for installing Windows Server 2008 R2 in VirtualBox. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.